Welcome to Mikey's Gaming Oasis. Today we're going to be going over Dawn of Defiance, the new open world survival game available in early access on Steam and Epic stores. This sells for about $15. We're going to go over the gameplay, the settings, as well as the building system, the combat system, and then go over some tips and tricks I learned in the initial phase of this game. I have spent about 9 to 10 hours playing this game, so let's see how it looks so far. First, let's get into the settings. As you can see, it has all the same settings as most games you have for those individuals who have multiple screens. It has it set up for you as well. Uh, to where you can pick the screen you want. It has full screen, borderless, and windowed. It automatically detects your aspect ratio that you have for each of your screens as you go through there. You can then set your specific resolution as you desire, your view, as well as your brightness and your motion blur. Ray tracing, if you're one of those individuals with a graphics card from Nvidia that has ray tracing, you can have ray tracing automatically turned on or it might be off. You might wanna go in and change that if that is what you like to have running in your system. Me personally, I do not, so I turned it off. All other graphic settings are here. You can set them up per what your system can handle and what you want to run your system at. Next, we have our audio. Me personally, I like to turn down my audio because you know it can be a little overpowering sometimes. Turn down that master volume to about half of where it's at then bring that music down to about 30 to 40, maybe 20%, I'm thinking, yeah, 20%. This music's pretty good, but a little loud, a little loud. Gotta watch those sound effects. Don't wanna be jumping at every little thing, so I'm gonna bring that down. And my environment, I don't want footsteps from like a rabbit or something to scare the living daylights out of me. Mute on focus lost, no. And then we're gonna go to the keyboard. What I like about this right here is that it allows you to set everything up in your keyboard on how you want to best play the game. It even goes as far as giving you a map when we go into custom key binding. If you take a look right here, custom key binding, you click on this little button right here and it gives you a map of where everything's at. It is absolutely amazing. I personally didn't mess with it because I found the settings to where everything was to be about optimal for my style of gameplay. I might adjust it a little bit later uh, for the rolls and tucks. Uh, I found that trying to use the directional while using my pinky to do the rolls and tucks is a little hard. It also has it set up for game pads if you are using a gaming pad instead of a keyboard. And then your interface, as you see here, that's gonna tell you what your what you see in the game itself, your HUD, if you would. Next, we're gonna go into setting up the game. So we're gonna go to join. First, you can join servers that are public. You can host a server with up to four players right now. But we're gonna go into a single player game. In here, when you're setting up a game, it'll allow you to determine what type of game you wanna set up. Do you wanna have a single player? Do you wanna host a server? As I said earlier, you can have up to four players. You can set a password, you can make it private, or you can make it public. For my needs, I'm just gonna play as single player, and I'm gonna set my rule set. This one is very important. Drop inventory upon death. Now, what that means, if you have that turned on, all the stuff in your inventory is gonna drop on your death, and you're gonna to have to run back to go get it. If you don't want that, you just go back and you turn it off. That way, when you die, your items stay on you and you respawn with those items on you. One more check to make sure everything's where I want it and we'll start the game. Make sure my game is named right and away we go. So starting off, we have a nice user interface. We have our skill set here. Our skills do not to be appear to be point-based. They appear to be action-based, meaning as you use those individual skills, you will get XP to, uh, to make those skills advance. Your character, you have a nice category. Then you have your 
uh, player stats on the lower right you hit the T button here and it's gonna take you to your inventory controls keep in mind this is just your inventory controls not your full inventory alrighty then the X doesn't seem to do anything it might be a compass don't know yet crafting so this is your personal crafting list that's what you can craft in yourself then you have your quests quests can be seen your requirements for the quest can be seen in the top left as well as in the right hand screen of your interface here so without further ado let's get going here so disembodied voice I sent you another Aetis. So as you can see, I can pick up rocks very easily. It gives a nice prompt when you have something you pick up. Oh, getting items out of a tree by punching it is a no-go. Sorry, Ark fams. You're going to have to do it the old school way. And then we're going to run around and pick up these items to meet the needs of the first quest we have on the top left. So I'm looking for thatch. Where is the thatch? I can't punch a tree to get thatch, so I'm gonna run around and look. Oh, there we go. We got thatch out of a bush, and it looks like we got some flux. Just like any other survival game, we wanna make sure we pick up everything we can. We never know what's gonna be useful now, later, or in the future, so we wanna do that. As you saw, once we completed a quest, a recipe came up and we went into our inventory and we were able to make it. I made an ax. You notice it dropped immediately into my hot bar. I really, really like that. Uh, most of the time you gotta, you make something, you gotta physically put it in your hot bar. If you forget about it, oh no, you're in so much trouble now. Uh, I like the mechanics. I like the visuals so far. It is amazing. I am noticing that your stam is highly important here. Uh, it, everything seems to be based off of it so far, but I like it. I like the way this works so far. We're gonna speed this up just a little bit to get to our next uh, point here. So as I'm gathering stuff, it is, I'm seeing that gravity has a effect on the logs and sometimes you gotta chase them to be able to chop them down. Uh, our next thing, okay, I'm gonna make a spear and a primitive shield. That gave us another uh, option. Feathers out of a tree, that is interesting. As you see, we had a upgrade here. As you can see, chopping down the lumber upgraded my lumberjack skills. And the, right here you see we get ax stamina cost 5% less, and then we have our next skill boost at 15. All right, we are about to finish another one, and we just got the health solve and the stamina solve recipe. Uh, stamina solve, I think it's gonna be very important. Uh, I learned that once you make it, uh, the bushes that you collected, the raspberries, the blueberries, and the yarrow are used to make these two elixirs. And the Stam Elixir lasts for about 10 minutes, and what it does is when you're not using your sprint or any action that costs Stam, it increases the speed in which it takes, or decreases the time to regain your Stam. Your health potion lasts about three minutes, and it's not like other health potions where you take it and boom, you get your health back immediately. No, 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 no. That'd be too easy, right guys? And this one, you take that health potion, and what it does is it gradually increases your health over time. As you see in the bottom left there, you see the rain and a 99. What that's saying is that I am getting damaged by it. Okay, so with completing the primitive bow and wood arrows, I just learned the primitive hammer. The primitive hammer is important. Uh, when you, you're gonna need your primitive hammer, to be able to make your structures. This also, by making that, it gave me a torch recipe and a repair recipe. So we're gonna go into the building menu. First, we gotta access our hammer. And as you see, the building menu is slightly different. And that's everything you need in there. Your controls are in your bottom right here for your building menu. The building system kind of reminds me of uh, a little bit like Encharted or in Encharted, Enshrouded, sorry, and a little bit like uh, Conan. 
uh, but it's a nice system, very simple. Uh, for most parts that you pick in here, you have an alternate part you can change it to, or style as they call it, by hitting F. So we're going to speed through here, uh, and I'm going to first I'm going to show you the two different types of doorways. See, this is what I mean by changes the style. You have a regular arch, uh, regular doorway, then I'm still in the doorway, and I'm going to hit F, and it's going to give me a doorway with a door. That's what it means by different styles. So we're going to speed through this building process to get to the rest of the items in this menu. Okay, now that the basic structure is built, we're going to look at our crafting stations that we have available to us. First is the butcher block. This is where we're going to render down all the food, that all the game that we hunt. And once we render it down, it's going to give us certain items for it. Then, of course, we have our traditional campfire. Everybody has the campfire. You can't, do, you can't survive without it. And then, of course, you have your cooking spit. Now, this is where we're going to cook our game or meat that we get from the butcher block each different type of meat is going to give you a different health benefit as i said the butcher block you're going to take your game you're going to throw it on the butcher block and it's going to render it down make a little noise render it down and it's going to give you four items all right so now we're at the storage section it is a staple of all survival games at this stage of the game, we have three styles of chests we can choose from. All it really does is change the color of the stripe on the chest, which can be very helpful for those OCD players who likes to have everything organized just so. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that if you have something in the storage boxes, it is wireless crafting for the crafting stations. Next, we're going to put down the hunter's station. The hunter station is where we're going to make our armor and leather goods and such. Uh, that'll be very helpful going forward. Now, hunting. This is where we're going to get some key ingredients. There are three levels of game so far that I've seen. Three star, two star, and one star. The level of game that you get once you kill it is going to be determined by several factors. Was the game scared when you killed it? How many shots did it take for you to take down that particular game? Okay. Now, don't stress too much about it being a one star versus a three star. While it does have a minor uh, effect on your rendering when you put it on the butcher block, it doesn't have a huge effect, as you will see in the testing that we're going to go through in just a moment. When you put it on the butcher block, It'll render it down, and like I said, it'll give you four items depending on what your game is. For example, here, this is a two-star hair. It's going to give us our standard three, which are meat, pelt, bone, and in this one, it's going to give us a pituitary gland used for other building materials. If you hover over each item, it'll tell you what they're used for. Now that meat is important. As mentioned earlier, each type of meat gives you a different type of uh, health boost or benefit. As we speed through these here, we're gonna go to a three star hair and you're gonna see that the, the difference is nominal between a three star and a two star hair. The butcher block's gonna render it down for us and here we go. I love the detail of having the meat and the cloth up there with the knives. I'm telling you, the graphics are amazing. Two pelt, two bone, uh, one loin, and a pituitary gland. So the pelt and the, uh, really doesn't change too much. Changes a little bit, but not a lot. But it can, it may have an effect later on down the road. We will, I guess, we'll have to test it later and find out. Okay, so the hunter station allows you to make your armor, as stated. As you can see, I have no armor on right now. So when I make the armor, it's going to automatically go into the appropriate slots in my inventory. Now, this will not happen 
the next set of armor I make, I will have to replace the current armor I'm wearing. In this game, you have two basic loose chests. You have the gold ones, which open at day during the day, and the silver ones that are night sealed. I found out later that you have to open up these at night. Each one of these chests will give you different items. To repair your items that may have been broken, it's not like you would in most games. You need to have this special tool, put it in your hop bar, and then you have to activate it and you have to left click. Now when you left click on this, it's going to go from the most damage to the least damage. If it's completely broken, it'll only repair half of it. Keep that in mind. Now this does not repair your gear from what I understand. If I am wrong, please let me know in the comments below. You have two types of enemies that you're going to face in this intro island. It is the lost and abandoned that can be found in caves and also come out at night. So be careful of them wandering around. They give you, they drop when you kill them, they drop arrows, ambrosia dust, which can be helpful for a multitude of things. The other types of enemies you will find is the soldiers that are stationed near important or key points. Keep in mind, these are armored soldiers and are a little tougher than your average fight. So make sure you try and fight them from a distance, if at all possible. Here you see the map of the Isle of Arrival. You have your legend on your left here, as well as all the other items that are shown on this island, as I have already completed it for you. This will help you later find everything you need. Now keep in mind, one of the first things you need to do is go to where the portal is marked here from your starting point. This, when you open up the gold chest there, it'll give you the recipes to be able to create the items needed to defile the places of power. A sword, a spear, and a bow. So we're gonna quickly go through the Hecta temple here, grab the some stuff around here. I see some pretty flowers, we're gonna grab that. And then we're gonna grab the recipes that I just spoke about. After that, we're gonna start looking at the places of power that are indicated in the map that you saw previously. The first place of power is place of power number one. Keep in mind, each one of these places are guarded by three to five of these soldiers. I highly recommend that you go for the soldier that does not have a shield first as he does the long range attacks and can seriously cause issues for you. As you work through it, make sure you keep in mind that these enemies are not lightweights. Once you have defeated each enemy, all of these shrines will have a treasure chest, a statue, and a little fire pit. Once you activate the statue, of course I gotta pick up the stuff around me as the statue goes up because I didn't realize the pedestal was rising from the ground. You go up and you have to put in the dust that we saw earlier. Now keep an eye out for all the other creatures that may be around, like these wolves that decided to get froggy with me. Now, once you've activated the pedestal, you have to interact with it one more time to give you a special ability. Let me take care of this last wolf here real quick. A one, two, a three. Thank you, Wolfie. I need that meat. And you interact with it again, and it embrace the power one. And what this will give you is an immunity to fall damage, melee attacks in the air, perform a slam attack. In other words, if you jump and you hit, you get a slam attack. The second place of power, again, we're going to have the five enemies that we got to contend with. Take care of them with as much distance as you can. I'm embarrassed to admit that I did get killed multiple times trying to take this particular shrine. Now that we've taken care of the first two guards, now it's time to take care of the second the second grouping, the other three. 
Now, I don't recommend doing what I just did here. I just wanted to see how strong and the capabilities to do this, which ended up with me dying and having to come all the way back again to try again. So this time I'm going to go for the distance shots and take care of the guy without the shield who will be throwing spears at me if I do not. Now, depending on where you hit this gentleman is going to determine the amount of damage you, you deal to them. I also, at this point, I didn't realize that I had earned the recipe for the sword, which caused me a little bit of a headache here. So I'm going to kill these guys off and then we'll activate this shrine to see what we get. Again, now that we've taken out all of our guards, something I forgot to mention, make sure you pick up the satchels that they drop. They give you very important loot. By opening them the chest in this one, I got a simple shield recipe as well. And I've activated the altar to rise. Do I have enough, enough dust? I do not have enough dust, so we'll come back with more in just a moment. So there are two ways at this point to get the the dust that we need one is killing the abandoned or lost and the other is a flower that only blooms at night so due to the fact that it is daytime we're gonna go over to a cave and find some of the abandoned and lost As you see around the cave, you see these purple flowers. Unfortunately, we cannot pick them as of yet as they only bloom at night. So we're going to go into this cave and we're going to take out some of these abandoned and lost. Ooh, it's creepy dark in here. This one is a deep one. Oh no, watch out. Oh, there they are. Let's speed through this uh, melee fighting craziness here. Be careful with these guys because they do like getting behind you and they swarm. So be wary. So, as you can see, it's nighttime that we're coming out of the cave, and you see the purple flowers that are glowing? Those are the flowers that are going to give us ambrosia dust. While we do not get as much ambrosia dust as we do from the flowers as we do from the lost and abandoned, they are, it is safer to pick them than trying to fight these guys. Like I said, be careful, they like to float around you, and ensure that you grab all the bags they drop, because they give you ambrosia dust as well. So... With that, I think we have 71, 72, 75. Let's pick up some of these flowers and get the rest of our ambrosia dust and then head back to the temple to defile it. Now that we're back at the temple and we've hit the place of power too, we're going to put the ambrosia, interact with it, turn on the flame, and we end up with embrace the power level 2, which gives us the ability to dodge and dash in midair. Very nice. Let's see what that looks like. Jump. Ooh, go up and forward and forward. Nice. It does take a massive hit on your stamina drain, though. So we got to keep an eye on that. Now, going into the third and final place of power. Again, it's five people. We're going to try and take as many out as we can from a distance. And here we go. As you can see, trying to take them out as a distance is the best bet. As soon as they get close, start to do some work. And at this point, I remembered that I had a sword, so I made myself a sword. And it did amazing against these individuals. Aiming for the spear guy first, which unfortunately did not do very well. Oh, am I going to make it? This is getting close. Ooh. And barely made it heartbeat hard. Make sure you pick up those satchels that they drop. Like this one gave me 15 hide. The treasure chest it's gonna give me a recipe for a flint arrow instead of using those wooden arrows we can now use the flint place the bow in the statue the altar will rise and we will place in our dust place of power three has been completed now that still leaves us with one mission so let's see what we get for embracing the power of three uh, jump in the air to enter and exit glide. Hold to ascend while gliding. Ooh, we get to fly? 
I'm a bird, mom. I'm a bird. Ooh. Okay, so we've hit the three places of power. Let's see what the door says now. As you can see, our only active quest in the Isle of Arrival is the door of Hecti. So let's go up to this door and see what it gives us. Here we go. Of course, always collecting stuff as we go. It is a survival game. Up to the door. Now that we've completed all three places of power and defiled them, it allows us to open the door. And inside this door, you will find a bunch of treasure chests. The one, first one on the left will give you a helmet and a chest piece. Nice. Then we have a grindstone recipe, a pickaxe. Nice. A tanning rack recipe in the next one. And then braciers and rabies. Rabies? The, for your feet, for your legs. And then, of course, at the temple here. Oh, look, we need... Ambrosia dust, animal bones, soft wood, and stone. I guess we're going to have to try and gather the rest of this up. So we're back at the house looking at what we've just learned, and we have determined that we need more space. One of the good things about the building mechanics with this is we can remove items without losing any of the materials, which allows us to update our bases or homes as we go. Now, what you see here is we have an animal rack or tanning rack. That's where we're going to get all of our leather goods from our hide that we used earlier. Then we're going to replace our crafting station, place that down, and we're going to put down our, our fireplace. And unfortunately, we cannot make the grindstone. We need to make our pickaxe and go find some ambrosia dust. This is the third way to get ambrosia dust. If you go to a cave where we find the lost and abandoned, there are crystals that are big, purple, beautiful crystals that you can take down to get you some ambrosia dust. Let's get through here and we'll go through the battle to get to those crystals. See these crystals here? Let's see if we have any lost and abandoned near here. We do. Let's take care of them. Do not forget to pick up the satchels they drop, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to want that resource, those that ambrosia dust that they drop in their satchels. Then we're going to take out our pickaxe, and we are going to get us some ambrosia crystals, I believe they're called. Let's double check that real quick. And... Seems to take seven hits to break it down. Yep, Ambrosia Crystals. We're gonna speed up this process here and we're gonna... Now that we've collected all that lovely Ambrosia Crystal, we're gonna head back to the house and you know what? We need stone too. Let's see if this pick works on stone as well. Apparently it does and it gave us an upgrade in our mining uh, skill. So we're going to collect some stone here because we do need that for our offering to open the portal. So let's speed through this stone collection and then grab the items we need for our offering. So we're back in the house and we are looking at to make sure we have everything we need for our offering. It appears we do. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our uh, grindstone here. We're just going to place this down here and we're going to put our ambrosia crystals in there and activate it to start to give us our ambrosia dust that we need for the offering. Before we go in, I want to make sure that we have all the best gear we can because we don't know what's going to happen. So let's make sure we're geared up properly. And as I said, since I already have gear in there, I'm going to have to physically move everything over. All right, one last check. I think we have everything we need for our offering to the portal. We have our weapons, we have our gear, we have our repair stuff. Let's make sure it's all in top notch. 
and then we will use our food boosts here let's put that in the drop down and we're gonna go do everything we need before we go in there and here we go run forest run all right here we go we're gonna open up that portal or rather give our offering to the portal 400 ambrosia dust 50 bones 200 softwood and some stone summon champion oh boy he's a big boy isn't he watch out there oh wow so i figured out with this guy you definitely want to stay away from his hammer it took me an embarrassing amount of time to beat him i died over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over before i finally beat him his hammer is so strong you might as well call him john henry rather than the champion what I learned through this fight was you needed to dash side to side or do a roll because if you did not, one hit from that hammer, as you can see, takes a huge amount of your health from you. Now that we have defeated the champion, we can portal away, I believe. Let's take a look. Ooh, pretty green light. Pretty green light. Where's the pretty green light going to take us? Let's go see. Pretty green lights. Travel to crossroads. So if you You're interact with well him, to pass the first test, most don't. I'm Aeacus. Why you say his name, Aeacus? Okay. So it looks like he's going to give us a speech. We can sell things and buy things from him. Uh, recipes. Interesting. Oh, that's a nice little function there. I think I'll build a base near him just for that purpose to make it easier. So from what I'm understanding for the story he's giving us, we're going to be trying to take out Hades as he's being unruly. That's very interesting. That tells me we're probably going to be facing other mythical creatures in this game. That's going to be awesome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So there's a few tips that I forgot to tell you. One of the things you need to know about is with this game, the bed is a little bit different. You don't just place it down and there bobs your uncle. You have to go up and claim the bed. And much like in Shrouded, if you lay down in the bed during the night hours it speeds up the day night cycle so i hope this tip is helpful and you don't end up like me having to run across the map on a regular basis the next thing is the brazers of apollo are found all over the map if you look the brazers of apollos there's three of them on the isle of arrival you will need to know where they're at for your, one of your missions on the main quest okay i have marked them here and I hope it makes it easier for you to find them. Thanks for watching. So my overall opinion you of have done this well game so far, the first test. keeping in mind that it is but there are early access, trials it is ahead. well worth the $15 to purchase and play this game. The graphics are absolutely beautiful. The Will gameplay the is champion? smooth. We seek the uh, combat, I think it's going to be Inventory. I think we can do some improvements on there for the dev. Uh, we must rid this the land of the gods in skills. I love the fact that it is not point based to the underworld. Action so based take up arms. And when you use them and how take much you use their them, power. skill. That take way, hold of it, your, your character is built around your playstyle. Conquer the not trials. what necessarily is needed in the game or the points you feel the you need at that moment. I think that's an amazing powers. way to do it. Uh, the build system Together, is simple yet elegant. I personally cannot wait to see what they do with the building dark. style. Uh, the story the seems very intriguing. Defiance. And I love the fact that it's not linear 
when you're doing the mission. It, it, it kind of takes you all over the place and allows you to make your own path. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below and have a great day, guys.